Sri Lanka enjoys some of the most beautiful and fertile land in the world. Twice a year, the terraced paddy fields produce abundant harvests of rice for the people. But for those who do not work on the land, there are plenty of alternative jobs. In the Kandyan district, carpenters turn out a variety of articles such as walking sticks and bowls on the simplest form of lathes. These products are painted with lac, the resinous secretions of the lac insect. There are only four colours available, red, yellow, green and black, and these are applied with a finger or thumbnail. The result is very durable and attractive. Some families earn a living by marketing cinnamon. First of all, the outer bark of the cinnamon tree has to be removed by scraping. When the bark has been scraped clean, incisions are made along the length of the branch into a second layer of bark. It is this inner layer which produces the cinnamon we use in our kitchens. Sri Lanka is a peaceful country, blessed with eternal sunshine, and the people are gentle by nature. Their government recognised the importance of conserving wildlife, and there are several game parks throughout the island where animals can live in peace. But even outside these special areas, certain creatures are protected by law. The cobra goya, or monitor lizard, is one such animal. He is nature's scavenger, and although good to eat, no one would dream of harming him. This lizard lives on many of the pests which would otherwise damage the crops grown for human consumption and is a friend to the farmer. Wherever you go on the island, you will come across little groups of people producing handicrafts. Local reeds or marsh grasses are often woven together to produce hard-wearing mats. Village factories employ girls to manufacture a wide variety of attractive items, ranging from handbags to decorated baskets. Monsoon, Sri Lanka's beaches are often shrouded in mist. But in the Gaul area, despite the weather, you will find men engaged in an unusual occupation. They are pole fishermen who squat on these flimsy perches for hours at a time with a simple rod and line protected from the savage breakers by a friendly coral reef. By many fishermen's standards, their catch is not very impressive, but these tiny sardine-like fish make a valuable contribution to the protein needs of the people. During the monsoon days, the catch may be small, but these fish are available along the Gaul coast throughout the year, and at other seasons are very plentiful. Gaul is a place noted for its lace-making, an art which has survived since the Portuguese occupation. This is a land of contrasts and strange religious rites. 
preparations are in progress for an unusual Hindu ceremony which will take place the same night. By early afternoon, many devotees are in a state of trance. This ceremony will demonstrate the faith of the believers, but at the same time baffles the scientists, for it defies the known laws of physics. The fire is the centerpiece of the performance, but it has to burn for many hours until only a carpet of red-hot ashes are left, and then fire walking will take place. The Buddhists also have unusual ceremonies and in Kandy, the ancient capital of Ceylon, an annual pageant called the Perahera takes place. This procession dates back to the 12th century and is perhaps one of the world's most dramatic religious festivals. It involves five temples, each providing groups of drummers and torchbearers and on the final nights includes up to 100 elephants. Kandyan drummers are famous throughout the world, but on this occasion the drummers are not here to entertain, they are paying homage to Buddha. The origin of this festival dates back to the time when the relic of one of Buddha's teeth was recovered from his cremation ashes and was kept for posterity in the Temple of the Tooth in Kandy. This relic was paraded through the streets during the Perahera, but today it is deemed so valuable it is never allowed to leave the temple. For many years, the biggest elephant in the procession had the honor of carrying a silver casket containing the Buddha's tooth. But today it is only a replica of that casket which is paraded through the streets. This, however, does not in any way diminish the people's enthusiasm for an annual pilgrimage to the Perahera. Night is also the time when the Hindu firewalking ceremony begins, but the fire still has a few hours to burn before it is ready. In the meanwhile, the proceedings begin to take on a horrific aspect when, to show their faith, many devotees have unsterilized meat skewers and bodkins pushed through the flesh of their cheeks. No one knows why this apparent torture does not hurt these people or why no blood flows from the wounds. It is possible that the long hours of waiting in a state of trance create a form of self-imposed hypnotic suggestion in which they will themselves to feel no pain. However, the devotees will tell you it's all done by religious faith. It's difficult to understand how anyone can enjoy having meat hooks inserted into the flesh of his back. And even more difficult for us to realize that he can dance and at the same time tow a young lad on the ends of the strings without severe pain. Some of the entranced devotees become quite violent, but there are always helpers nearby to see that they do not come to harm. Although the fire may look cool to the camera's eye, the heat keeps the crowd well away. Yet these people choose to walk barefooted along the entire length of the fire to prove their faith. In times past, onlookers caught up in the excitement of the proceedings have tried to walk the fire, only to receive severe burns. Yet the devotees' feet are quite unharmed. Fire walkers have been investigated by many scientific authorities, but no one can explain how bare feet can come in contact with temperatures as high as 420 degrees centigrade without the flesh burning. 
For normally peace-loving people, these violent acts of self-mortification seem out of place, and yet they are regular occurrences in Sri Lanka and must remain one of the unsolved mysteries of the Orient.